since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench. And by Junk Be Gone. And by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source here at the Junk Beyond Studios. We appreciate you joining us today. It looks like we're having some issues with Server 4 for those of you in the business. Um, we appreciate the fact that you're here to talk Tennessee football. We know that we're only two weeks away, less than two weeks away from kickoff. So we're just going to chalk this thing full of Tennessee football. Everything from recruiting to why Tennessee will in fact finish in the top two in the SEC East. So some positivity right off the top of the show. We got eight guys on the set with me today, including three VFLs. Let's get right into it. First segment of today's show brought to you by the Garza Law Firm. If you find yourself in need of an attorney, chances are you're in a stressful, somewhat scary situation. You need someone who can, you can be confident in, someone your neighbors have trusted before you, someone with a long track record. That's Marcos Garza in the Garza Law Firm. Trusted, local, proven. Visit GarzaLaw.com today, this week. Get familiar with them. You'll be glad you did. The Garza Law Firm and Marcos Garza, we appreciate them for bringing you the Sports Source. All right, let's welcome in the uh, first wave of panelists, and that's why we're doing some hockey, <laughs> hockey line changes today because it's going to be four in, four out. Here we go. Uh, first segment, we got Jimmy Himes right here from the Sports Animal. Mm -hmm. 991 The Sports Animal also provides Josh Ward. So the two of you here today, thank you very much. Thank you. David Oven from The Athletic is back with us. And down there from GoBalls247.com, we got Ryan Callahan. Ryan, thanks for joining us. All right. Uh, we try and be realistic for the most part around here. Uh, and sometimes that means if, if the, the field is going over here saying why, we stop and say, why not? And when the crowd says, why not, we sometimes say, well, why? Well, today, we're just going to go along with the crew because a lot of people around East Tennessee and some nationally are looking at Tennessee and saying they can absolutely go 9-3 and three this year. They could finish in the top two in the SEC East. So let's just say that they do finish number two or number one in the SEC East. That'd be a pretty big year if they somehow win the East. But let's say they finish top two. Josh, I'll start with you. What's the number one reason they will be able to do that? Well, everybody's excited about Hendon Hooker and Cedric Tillman coming back, right? And the offense last year, what it did, what can it do in year two? So I'll start on defense. I'll say if Tennessee's able to go from where it was last year to being second in the East, I think it's the defense. I think it's the talk of fall camp being there's more depth in the secondary. There's more depth on the edge to help create a pass rush. Newcomers like Joshua Josephs and James Pierce, but also development of Byron Young and Tyler Barron. I would say that the talk of August translates so the defense is able to help not bell out the team, but get more stops within the game and not put as much pressure on the offense in games that could go either way. The Florida game, mm -hmm. uh, the Kentucky game, maybe the South Carolina game because South Carolina's improved. Jimmy, I'd say the defense has taken the step from last year to this year that it needs to for the program to take a step. I do too. There are certain expectations with the offense, right? With Hooker and Tillman and Jabari Small. In, in specific, and you kind of touched on it, I think it's the pass rush. I think that will help. The secondary I still have concerns about, although they've got a lot of folks back there, but I think the pass rush can help mitigate some of the concerns in the secondary. So with Byron Young, with Tyler Barron, with the young guys that you mentioned, with Roman Harrison, I think that is going to make T can push Tennessee over the top and allow them to finish second. I still think, you know, you, what you guys are talking about, you know, whether that's, you know, you getting it up in the efficiency ratings and in the secondary or, or being able to, to rush the passer, if they're doing that stuff and then offensively, they, they may knock on the door of pushing Georgia a little bit. I really think if this, all this offense says, if this offense is gets even more efficient, gets to be in the top 10 in, in yards per play and, 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 and really takes it to the next level, they, that's good enough to get them to the top two, I think. I think them and Kentucky are very close. I think Tennessee's mm -hmm. a little bit better. But if that offense takes another step, I think the defense, even being what it was a year ago, if they don't improve, I think that's still even good enough to be top two in the SEC East. All right. I'll go a different direction. I, I'm going to go with the offense, and I think you have to look at last year as the reason why. When you, when you really look at what happened last season, they, they got to play Pitt early in the season with half a game of Hendon Hooker as a quarterback. Florida, that was early in the season. Really, the, that offense hadn't hit – 
hadn't really gone into high gear yet. I think if the offense is just a little bit better in those two games, you're nine and three last year. So I think in a, in a way, the offense still is the key to this season and being good. And then the other thing, just getting some injury luck. This team's still not that deep. They need to, uh, if they finish mm -hmm. second in the East, it's going to be because they stayed mostly healthy at key positions. Well, the advantage with the offense is the speed with which they play. And the question is, Hendon Hooker another year in the system, how much faster can they be? Because that's one thing they talked about last year as well. This isn't super hyper warp speed. This isn't as fast as we can go. You'll see in the future. Okay, we're going to see this year having a veteran quarterback, a fifth year quarterback, but his second year in this system. Are they going to be able to kick that thing into overdrive? And I think that if you're faster than they were last year, then you are impressive. Uh, when you look at uh, one of the knocks on this team, and we've talked about it on the show, uh, other teams now have a book on you. They've seen you for a year. They know your personnel. They know your system. They know how to attack you. Can't that work the other way? Josh Heupel last year didn't know a lot about the SEC. Everything was looking at game tape and talking to people. Mm -hmm. This time around, well, he's got an idea of how teams are going to try and stop his offense. He's got an idea of who the personnel is across the line of scrimmage. I think that can be an advantage for Tennessee. If we look at that and we say that that could be a disadvantage for Tennessee, you, to be fair, you have to say it could also be an advantage for Tennessee if your coaches take advantage yeah, of it. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think ultimately, you know, what Tennessee was doing offensively last year was not revolutionary. It's not like nobody had ever seen it. I think there's 13 FBS teams right now that are running some versions of Baylor's system. Yeah. I think three in the SEC. So it's not like teams haven't seen this or that it's totally new. It's just that, you know, when you execute this and you have really good athletes on the outside, you really can't stop it. You have to match teams athlete for athlete. And when teams can do that with Tennessee, they were able to slow them down. But when Tennessee has better athletes in their competition, they will blow them away just because that's how this whole offense works. So I agree with that. I don't think that, that being able to see the system and all that stuff another year really does a lot defensively because if you've got the athletes and they know what they're doing, it really doesn't matter if the other team, you know, understands the system and what they want to do because understanding how to stop it and actually stop it are two very, very different things in the system. There's a reason why it's proliferated throughout the sport. And There's you've come a, around because you were not huge on Josh Heupel's offense last year. You saw it, and it kind of won you over a little bit Yeah, more. I think ultimately when you have the athletes, I think they had better athletes than people thought. And I, I was surprised that they were able to be yeah. as efficient in year one. I thought they'd have to recruit better athletes, but, but it, they, they, they really surprised a lot of people, myself included, in year one. The, the other thing about the offense to me, there are only three defensive coordinators that Tennessee will face this year that they faced last year. There was a turnover mm -hmm. with some of them, and there's some new teams on the schedule. So it's not like these defensive, a lot of these defense coordinators have a book on them. Right. So if, you can watch film all you want, but if you want a real answer, look at what happened in the first quarter. Yeah. <laughs> After all these teams watched film and then they got hit in the mouth. Now, the second quarter altered things, but the first quarter, it's different. And when you only face three defensive coordinators from a year ago, I think that helps. I think it also gives Tennessee a help that they know the personnel yeah. on the other teams. I mean, not just system, but at some point, you know, this guy can't cover in space. You know, we can attack this guy. Uh, mm -hmm. This guy can't get to us. If we're running this, he's no, there's no way he's going to catch up to us. I think that could be a pretty big advantage for Heupel and his staff this year. Yeah, I think self-scouting offensively what they're doing to stay on that side of the ball. Uh, you have four starting offensive linemen that are back, so that helps trying to figure out tackle, of course. But can they be better in short yardage situations? That's something that has to happen. Javari Small developing, I think, has to help in that. Uh, that also could potentially help in red zone scoring. Right. They were actually middle of the pack. Think about that, how good they were offensively, and they were middle of the pack in the conference in red zone scoring. If they can be uh, better, if they can be top three or four in red zone scoring and more efficient near the goal line, that could be the difference to get them to second in the East. He's beefed up a little bit, too. I've heard people call him Jabari Median. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll let you close it out. You talk about self-scouting, too. What about just a full off-season of getting to know Hendon Hooker and be on the same page with him during games? I think that's an underrated aspect of this, is knowing what they want to do and how best to use Hendon Hooker and play to his strengths. What he likes. What? Yeah, I, I think that, that is a good point. All right. Uh, when we come back, we're going to see all you guys later, so stick around. Uh, but next, we're going to bring in the next wave. So we got four new guys coming in here. Uh, let's tell you what's coming up in this show. Uh, player concerns uh, in terms of bodies that have been missing for fall camp that may not be back. What are the biggest concerns coming out of camp? Uh, Hendon Hooker compared to other SEC quarterbacks. The Smoky Grays will make their return. We'll talk to the VFLs about that. UT recruiting update, we'll get that from Ryan Callahan. It was a good week for the UT secondary moving forward. TV deals, and I know some of you don't care about the, the, new one, the, the details of these, these new Big Ten and SEC contracts, but here's the deal. One, it can affect you and where you find games. So we'll talk about that aspect. And also, what do you think about Tennessee's budget being smaller than Rutgers' budget? 
Well, moving forward, that could be the case. Northwestern could have more money coming in than Alabama. We'll discuss whether the SEC got jobbed in this whole deal and much, much more. When we come back, though, ESPN listed their top 100 players for the season. I'll break it down by the SEC school. We'll let these guys compare where Tennessee is to that, and then I'll ask, is it a fair expectation for people to say, yeah, nine wins, nine wins is the expectation. Is that fair when you look at where Tennessee's roster, uh, roster is compared to SEC schools, according to ESPN? So a caveat on the end of that. Come on back, we'll bring out four new guys next on The Sports Source. Miss an episode? Catch up at sportsource.tv or our YouTube channel.